bastard sermon, you motherfuckers. Welcome to another episode of the Bastard Sermon. I'm one of your three hosts, Cody Hucker. Luke Young. And that's Lloyd being weird. <laughs> I was going to uh, wait. I would, you know, I, I, I would was, sit here in fucking dead silence. For I, I wanted fucking... to, but I didn't because I just, I had like fantasies running in my head. I needed to discuss right away because like <laughs> before we turned on the mic, you, you had jokingly said, right, Lloyd's going to fuck Cody. Okay. And then like you started to prepare to hit the button. And Lloyd was just like dead stare, like rocking up and down, like yes. And and in my head, I started to think like, what would that next episode be? Like, the episode after Lloyd dominates Cody. Like, why does it have to be Lloyd well, dominating well, me? Why can't it be well, a gentle? Cool. Why can't it be a gentle, nice little like just making love sesh? Why no, does anyone, it's a dom- does anyone it's, who listens to this or heard anything I say believe for a second that that's how that's going to go down? No, it's all about dominance. For I, sure. Well, it's my. Okay, it's my fantasy. We're talking oh, fantasy. fantasies here. So. Oh, so that's what you'll be like daydreaming as you cry while yes. your ass is getting split. Correct, yes. I feel it. That this was my decision. That if he is fucking me like a brutal animal that I know that he is, it's my decision that he's doing that. And not because I'm duct taped to his bed. <laughs> the, the dirty sock that I'm not positive hasn't been used for cum, but I'm positive. <laughs> It's been used for cum in my mouth. and There's a flashlight wedge between his legs so that I can have a good one after the bad one. God damn. <laughs> God damn. Oh, man. Yeah, you'd be covered in diarrhea and blood, though, so I don't think that it would be a fun time for just you. Just think that next yeah, episode that. startup would be like like uh, Lloyd just excitedly smoking a <laughs> cigarette. Like, this is an episode of the Bastard Sermon. And, like, <laughs> and I'm just there like, it, he says his name, like, um, and I Luke, look like, and you're just like crying. And like, I look defeated, like, Ed, yeah, we, the camera out. angle changes. It's in black and white, like the flashbacks of American History X. I'm fucking my head shaved. I'm Edward Norton <laughs> laying in the side of the bed with the black history teacher talking to me, comforting me as my asshole is, took 27 stitches. <laughs> 27. <laughs> <laughs> See, now also, I don't want to make this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to back this up and make it real, but you were like, you act like I haven't done that before. Have you fucked somebody with diarrhea and blood? Hey, you know what? Someone just lived his life with, you know. Oh, that's the way you took it. I thought you were going to ask him, have you fucked someone for dominance? And I'm like, that's, uh, how are you, why are you how even asking that? How else does he fuck? How, why no are you even asking that? Yeah, there's no other way. <laughs> Last week's episode was enough of a hype fest about Lloyd. It was just fucking... I'm, I'm sure he was at some bar or at some like show and some tough guy like eyeballed him and then he like actually big bodied him just through like presence alone through the eyeballs and he just like the other guy the guy who initiated it just looked down and strolls off sadly into the men's restroom and then Lloyd just like dominates him right there in the stall walks out. <laughs> And Not was, if Lloyd's was, telling the story. No, if Lloyd's telling the story, he bicycle kicked him like <laughs> Liu Kang. And he then said summoned, I sized him up. He didn't look like he knew it. Fucking I, I three like years I, of jujitsu tops. Yeah, the fucking the creator of Mortal Kombat actually appeared in the bottom of the real life screen. Was like toasty in the middle of him like kicking that, his ass. I like that I told stories about <laughs> Bert and Joe jump kicking people and shit. And you guys like, oh well, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It's yeah. gonna happen. Troops, troops are gonna happen. The comedy podcast. What do you want from us? Uh, <laughs> let's leave with this. Speaking of comedy, goddamn Blake fucking Hammond crushed it. Clark, Carl yeah. Spath. Oh my god! Yes. Everybody at that show. Carl Spath, uh, Asa Dwyer, Lee Kimbrell, and uh, I'm I'm forgetting the Mark Shalafu. Mark Shalafu. They all. Mark Shalafu had me. Dude, he's Whoa. a funny, funny fucking dude. I didn't what want an him amazing to be... guy to open. This sounds shitty. Or no, was no, he didn't open, did he? No, no. no. This sounds Carl shitty, did. but looking at his face, I didn't want him to be funny. I was like, nothing about this guy strikes me as funny. He, I don't yeah, like he, him. he looked like Immediately a camp counselor. crushing. Yeah, he looked like uh, I dropped my uh, kid off at school, and there's a guy that stands outside, and just looks like the least funny, just most serious. Reminds me of pricks that I knew when I went to school. He looks like one of those guys, and I was like, I don't like him. And then he opened his mouth for one second, and I was like, fuck, I like him. To me, he was like that spirit guy. Like, come on, guys, let's get more cheer on, you know? Like, <laughs> that guy, but he wasn't. He looked he wasn't. hateable, but I... Yeah. He, there was, like he was hilarious. I, he looks like what I assume Pete Holmes' best friend looks like. <laughs> Dude, I fucking love Pete Holmes, though. Let's not shit on Pete Holmes. I, I fucking that. love Pete Holmes. But I'm okay. just saying, if, you're, if Pete Holmes was like, oh, my best friend's coming, you'd be like, yeah. Dude, when he... What was it? His, <laughs> his first uh, Comedy Central Presents, like 2009 or something like that, his joke about leaning on his meat shelf, his ass with the hip i was like i can't relate to anything more i completely understand what he's talking about right now <laughs> <Do you>? yes <laughs> 
Yeah, dude, that show was fucking phenomenal. It was yeah, yeah. genuinely Congratulations, good. Blake. I'm not just hyping this up because like Blake's my friend and shit, uh, or the because I have them on my podcast. And Blake's I, like, right now, like, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> they are genuinely, all of them, were just as funny as any <clears throat> yes. like headlining comic I've ever seen. And I've seen a fuckload of them. I've seen Hotel, I've seen Stanhope, I've seen fucking... Uh, we're about to go see Cummins uh, this week, actually. We've, I've seen fucking... Finance. I mean, I could go all the way down the line. I've seen a fuckload of people. I have a pretty good barometer for what's funny and what's not funny, and I'm not, I'm not overhyping this. They were as funny as any national headliner that you'll see. Period. All their material was tight as fuck. All of them were fucking solid. Blake crushed, and I'm so stoked that we went to the Late Show because I guess the Late Show was feeling it so hard. Drinks flowing, everybody's laughing. He sees his friends in the fucking crowd, and he start. He went. He went for it. He went for it with uh, jokes that he didn't otherwise do. You could tell that he was kind of like sketchy on the material a little bit and it made it more fun for me to like oh he's taking chances he's taking chances on the amazon special he might cut it out but like oh fuck he's going for it and they fucking nailed it like crushed it every time he was going dark he was being fucking like funny as shit the entire time i've i loved going and seeing that i don't get to go out to a lot of local shit very often but that was man that was a beautiful experience i i really really liked it because uh I, I got to have one of those weird moments where, you know, I had done workshops with, with Blake, you know, five times at this point, and uh, I can't remember one of the two jokes that I had heard in workshop before, but that, that pop punk joke was one of them. So it was really cool to, like, hear him talk about a joke, like, at the workshop and hear, like, the outlines or, like, the one-liners, but then to see it actually flushed out in full color, like... The way it was supposed to be not just hey wh what do you think about like this and this because i'm thinking about like this is the premise you know to actually see it from a to b it was it was awesome it was, it was hilarious really cool. to see it in motor like i didn't even know i don't know how they're gonna film it how it's gonna look when they're done because it's a row of fucking chairs in an old cellar basement is what it felt like and just was leaking I was getting to that. Yeah, they fucking every comedian addressed that there was a leaky pipe, and I swear to Christ, I it fell on Blake like eight times. He said not a fucking word I about it. I didn't see Blake. I didn't see it until Blake got up there. I heard them talking about it, and I was like, ah, they're comedians. They're joking. Maybe one water drip came out. Apparently, it had been leaking heavy all fucking night, and I just didn't see it. Something about how Blake's uh, giant body blocks out the light will let you see <laughs> water driplets a little bit easier. But fucking when I when he got up there, it's it's pouring on him essentially. A nice. A steady fucking piss trinkle out of my fucking, my, my <laughs> wart fucking ridden tiny dick is what it looked like. Like, when I go to take a piss at the, at the urinal is just, Blake's just basically just eating water blood. the entire, less blood, yes. Less scabs in the piss, but, uh, just dripping on him. He didn't address it once, which I don't know, indifferent to it entirely. I just thought it was funny, like, that that's gonna be in his Amazon Prime special. It's just a leaky fucking pipe dripping on his face. In, in that moment, I was like, is there not a... There's no way you didn't notice this in the earlier show. Is there not a duct tape roll in this in, in the entirety of Motor's fucking fucking business or the next door businesses? Can we not get a roll of duct tape to fix this for the Amazon Prime special? Like how how little did the fucking staff care about that? Like I don't want to shit talk Motor too much, but goddamn fucking next time Motor <laughs> Motor That's that Motor Look charm. out for the motherfuckers that are fucking performing and filming Amazon Prime specials in your basement and shit like that, but yeah. other than that, it was a phenomenal fucking time. Like that and that didn't ruin it by any stretch, but I just felt bad for the comedians that had to like dodge water droplets as they're like trying to tell jokes and make funny, make me laugh. The crowd was great. Everybody's laughing their fucking dicks off yeah. and uh, got to bring Redbeard. Redbeard was even fucking stoked on how funny they were. And he knew nothing about these people, had no expectations, and fucking heard the same thing from him. Heard the same thing from other people that were there. Man, he crushed it. I, I just have to overhype it a bunch because, not overhype it, but I have to hype it a bunch because I want people to go out and check it out. Like, I was just talking to Blake today about it and he was like, for real, I'm glad you got to come and see it because the Cincinnati scene is a crushing it right now. Like yes. crushing it on all fronts. And he was like, and it's beautiful. And when people come out and actually get to see it, it's a great fucking thing. So yeah, Blake Hammond, I love you, motherfucker. I'm so fucking happy for you. Yes. Brings me to my next uh, line of topics. Uh, Jeremy Johnson has a event that he's put together for Are Thanksgiving we weekend. Right yeah, I've, yeah, I confirmed all this. We okay. don't have... I think we're going to go on on Friday. We have to talk about this. I don't know for sure. If we're doing I, both. I th we're not doing both. We're going to okay. do one or the other because he's splitting up all the acts. But there is the uh, something volcano. Quaint Volcano, I think is the name of it. I should yes, have had Quaint the Volcano. You know what? Let me just pull the poster up. Let's, uh, let's do some due diligence here before we start just fucking rattling off about. We got it right here. 
Perfect, perfect. Yeah, Quaint Volcano Comedy Festival at Chameleon. It'll be November 26th and the 27th. That's a Friday and a Saturday show. 7 to 11 p.m. That's right. Uh, the two podcasts that are on Top Bill. By the way, uh, I was scared about the Top Bill spot, but he was like, I just made it that way because these are the only two podcasts that aren't comedians on the show. So I was like, whew, wipe my brow of sweat away now so I'm not fucking, so I can sub- sub- subvert some expectations on this. But the Bastard Sermon, us, us motherfuckers are going to be there with some uh, right. comedian friends. Uh People that are going to be on the bill be with us. We'll be talking shit. How Hilarious we do. motherfuckers. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a good ass time. It'll be the same hangs that you get here, but live. If you like what we do here, come out and check that out. And if the, you don't, there will be alcohol, so you will. Yeah, you'll fucking love it. You could get drunk and just listen to me fucking babble to myself, and you'll you'll fall in love with me, and we'll make out in the parking lot, and then I'll be like, ha ha, you have warts in your mouth. <laughs> Roast Jeopardy will also be there. I'm not familiar with it, but I'm going to listen to it. Uh, do you want to read off the other names of the comics, Luke? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the, these are the featuring acts that will be there after we fucking blow shit up on stage. We've got Jeremy Johnston. We have Blake Hammond, Chris Seamer, Alex Leeds, Cal Jansen, Carrie C., Phil Pointer, Billy DeVore the Fourth, Josh Faust, Johnny Barmore, Grant Stiles, William Alexander, Justin S. Atkins. Clinton Jacob and Jeremy Lavender. Again, Chameleon, November 26th and 27th, 7 p.m. to I don't, 11. We'll tell you what day that we're going to be there, but either way, go to both shows. I'm sure that it's yes, not going to cost 100%. much. 100%. I don't know the price. We'll tell you that as we know. We'll, you'll hear us uh, talking about this event a lot, but if you want to come and see Bastard Sermon Live, uh, we haven't done one of these Our first since the ever. Pike. Well, no, we did the Pike Tattoo Company. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a little different. We did two of those. I wasn't there for one of them, but that was years ago, and uh, we were going to do Bastard <laughs> Fest, but COVID canceled it, so if you want to see like the first, like we've got live mics on a PA system version of the Bastard Sermon, come out and fucking check it out, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, all right. We can move on past that now. Yeah, yeah are we getting sorry. to the weirdness now? Yeah, 100%. Did you have something? Dude. I've been talking for so long. <clears throat> um, fucking, I'm getting motion sickness in the VR. That's a thing. It happens to a fuckload of people. I bought fucking Resident Evil 4, and I'm just getting sick all over the place. Are you throwing up? Not yet, Are you but feeling I'm like sure I will. What is it like? What is it that triggers it? Uh, so, like, I'm I'm standing still, but as I'm moving around in the world, I'm, like, flying. Like, moving so goddamn fast. So, like, if you know Resident Evil, you save at, a like, a typewriter. And I ran up to it real fast, and I pressed A to, to initiate it. And in VR, you can, like, type on it and whatnot and hit enter. But now, uh, uh, so, like, I walked up to it and I pressed A, and it reoriented itself. So, like, it made my character take a step back, darken the area. Area When it made, uh, when it reoriented the room and my character took a step back, I was standing still. I lost my balance. My equilibrium changed. Like, I fell backwards so I could, like, get into the position that my character in VR was supposed to be. I just fell the fuck over, dude. I'm getting sick. Yeah, like getting sweaty. I gotta like take it off, lay down for like a couple minutes. <laughs> when I was playing it, there wasn't a lot of games where you're moving a lot, and if you did, it was the point and click. So like the movement was real shitty. So I feel like they've worked out. Have they ironed the edges out on that? Like the movement problems that they used to have with yeah. VR shit. So yeah, you can move. Dude, s- it's like- it's nuts because it's not just like okay, you have two controllers, you got a gun in one hand or whatever. Like you look down, you've got the whole strap on your chest. Like, you got the knife over your heart. And you can grab you, it? Yeah. You Ooh. got the grenade next to it on the right. You got the clips down at your belt. You have to reload your gun and shoddy and so everything. So there's no button, legit. like, scroll through nope. your arsenal of weapons. You grab you the grab weapons it. You got the, on your You person. got the piece down at your right. <laughs> you got the shoddy uh, up uh, behind your back to the right. You got to, like, reach back, pull the trigger to, like, grab it and pull it up front. So you get to know what it feels like to be a Trump supporter in you know, McDonald's. <laughs> At any given time. <laughs> and kill zombies, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it sounds fucking live, but like the I imagine that motion is going to create some fucking some head spinny moments fine, and shit though. like that. I mean, That's you'll get fine. over it. Don't be a pussy. Oh, it's I like, won't. Dude, like, I'm, I'm looking forward to my first acid experience on this. I really am. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, like yeah, Resident Evil scary, but I'm looking for some real weirdness on there, dude. You're playing four on there? Four? Resident Evil 4? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you're watching. So the crowds are coming after you. Because they, uh, one of the setups for one of the Resident Evils, uh, the trailers that I see on the, the, the little reels on Facebook, dude's running, right? And yeah. then it was just like, it, it pulls up a, a, a something phobia, and it's the fear of crowds. And I was like, why are they doing that? And he turns around, the entire village is following him, and you find out why he's running. Yeah. It's like, oh, fuck, they're right there. It would scare the fucking piss out of me if I was actually, because I've been in VR and horror games before. Not a big horror guy. Man, it is intimidating when 
something's coming at you, even if it's a digital image of something, you feel like you're in the room with it. Like yeah. it, everything except for the smells are there. And put a piece of rotten meat in the room with you, and you'll get all the smells you need. No, it, you're, you're, it's very real because uh, uh, it's like early in the game, you walk into this hut, and there's like a dude waiting for you around the corner. For real, felt like I was being assaulted by an adult. It's like, scary as fuck. <laughs> Yo, the next generation is going to be talking about their PTSD they got from playing fucking VR video games. Can't wait for that. This it's going to be sick. Dude, therapists are fucking just investing in fucking Oculus right now. They're just dumping money in Oculus right now. Like, this is going to be fucking great for my paycheck in 10 years. Dude, yeah, it is. It's scary as fuck, the crowds. Yeah, like, you know, you walk into the city, there's four dudes, like, doing farm work. But as soon as they see or you shoot one, like... The whole the whole squadron is after you. Is that the only game that you're fucking with right now? Uh, that and Gorn, but Gorn is just fun and nonsense. You're in a coliseum. You can just rip a gladiator's heart out. You can just oh, rip I've his seen arms that game. off. That yeah, looks dope. Dude. It's dope as shit. You get lobster claws, dude. You just pins this guy's fucking dome off. It's it's nonsense. Have you seen the one that's like you're on a floating like piece of land basically where there's just like air around you and clouds, but like you're on like almost like a farmstead with like the, a big building and you get all these guns and these dudes just stand there and it's just a free form way for people to just go around and shoot things in the face but you can like jump off a building fall down trick shot shoot them fucking throw your gun in the air catch it you you actually pull your clips out you can throw your clip turn your gun upside down it'll catch the clip if you aim it just right pull it back shoot the guy right in the face and then reset whenever you want to any point on the map you can run up the sides of the walls and shit like that game looks fucking incredible no you know, i have it. it's this just insane it's a tester game so it's not a real game where there's like objective and points and like there's not even like they're not even running around or like coming after you it's just fun to like in vr like fuck around and like shoot people and like just do graphic horrible things to people but the ragdoll physics look fucking insane it just looks like a marvelous gaming experience for just like i don't feel like a gamer anymore where i have the motivation to work towards unless it's a 10 out of 10 fucking one of the best games that are going to be released, not just for the year, but for the fucking, for the <laughs> half decade, I'm not, I'm probably not playing it. Like, unless it's yeah. one of the, like, I just don't, I have the time, but I don't have the motivation anymore. But I, I could definitely jump into something and play a fucking fuck around like that. And it looks like one of those, like, like you were talking about Gorn, just like a fun yeah. jump into it, fuck around, have a good ass Yeah, I'm going to get it on your head at some point. Yeah, I've. I haven't played the newer shit. I've, I've played uh, Sean's. I'm going to get on your head. I used to, I played Beat Saber. I wasn't a huge fan, but Space Pirates I loved, but it was a fixed platform style game, and like the, the bots come at you in waves, and you yeah. have to like attack them and defend against them with your little shield, like shoot at them. You could do Matrix shit to dodge them, and eventually they start surrounding you at all sides, and you've got to like look around, and you got to do some fucking, I'm doing like fucking cartwheels and shit like that. I probably look like the goofiest beatboxer of all time. <laughs> Breakdancer, breakdancer of all time, fucking just like trying to spin on my head. In my <laughs> in my head, it looks super cool, but it's like when I look back on videos of this podcast, and I'm just like, oh, there's a little hair that's just here underneath <laughs> my cap for the entirety of the podcast, and I didn't adjust it till 50 minutes in. Oh, that's what my face looks like. So everybody else watching me, oh man, what a dork! What a dork is playing Space Pirates right now? But you feel like Keanu Reeves in the Matrix. That's a fact. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Yeah, let me check my head real quick, because I noticed that on the bird episode, there's literally, the, now that we have high-definition cameras, there's one hair, just here, just in a little loop, the whole fucking time we were recording, right. and I couldn't get over if it. If I see I any hair in video. your face, I'll brush it out, Jan Lee. I might <laughs> give you. you a little kiss after that. Thank you, yes, I'd appreciate that. Just lick your finger. Mm. <laughs> <it over. laughs> I, might moan I might moan in the middle of it, too. Oh, yeah, daddy, please. Uh, are you thinking about Omni Omni Tread? Is that uh, something that's it's within your financial money. ballpark? No, not at all. How much is it? Aren't probably they making it way too much? They're probably it's probably like a grand. There's one that you could do in your socks though. Now, like it used to be like way goofier, but like there's one that's like in beta right now, which means it's about <laughs> to be released as a full version where you can get it, but you have to accept that it's gonna have major problems and you can't like fucking you can't it's be like seven thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars. <laughs> yeah, nah. <laughs> Do you want a new eBay. car or do you want an Omni Tread? Like, I think that I would rather uh, have an Omni Tread and never fuck women ever again. <laughs> <laughs> fuck rock climbing when I could do it in VR. <laughs> right? <laughs> VR rock climbing. Hey, there's free climbing ah, in VR, dude. This is I way bet. easier. Hey, but. <laughs> all right, so let's get Lloyd in the conversation finally. Please. Did we watch some fights this weekend, man? Let's go. They were pretty, pretty great. Good. Yeah. They were brutal. What, what fights did you guys watch? Um. It was the Glover Teixeira versus Jan Blachowicz for the 205-pound title. Shouts and out to Sheriff. 
Yeah, Glover uh, came in and actually he made me money too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lloyd had some bets on a uh, what my bookie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that one, that one did. I, I made a bunch of like weird prop bets because like I, I put money in there forever ago and I made like five hundred something dollars off like two fights. Yeah. And then I just like bet goofy shit off of there, and it's been up and down for like the past couple of years. Like I don't, I don't bet on it to win money. It just makes it more fun. And uh, so yeah, I, I did a bunch of goofy bets, you know, like, uh, prop bets on like the last five fights or whatever, and most of them turned out, you know, as I expected to not be anything. But that last one, I was like, I think Glover's gonna submit him. And uh, yeah, it I pay, it paid out like two hundred twelve dollars. Nice. God damn it. But yeah, yeah. All, the fight, all the fights were fucking pretty solid. I, I, I wanted put? to watch the first fight that I kept hearing about this referee dropping the ball on. I wanted to see Dude, this guy get the shit. It was so fucking gnarly. There, there was a, this French guy, a French kickboxer and uh, some other dude. And the other dude just like lit him up in the middle of like the, I think the second round or whatever. And everybody's like, oh, this fight's over. Like the guy's standing against the cage like. You can see him, like, going out and coming back in as he's getting hit. And uh, all the announcers were like, oh, okay, that's the end of the fight. And the ref just stood there and watched, like, he's still standing up. It's fine. Like, <laughs> no no concern for, like, fighter safety. It's just, like, because it was in uh, Abu Dhabi. Yeah. And this is a ref from, like, I guess over there. And he was just like, yeah, very much like, if he dies, he dies. Kind of <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you just see him. He's just got this, like, very serious, like, like scowly face the entire time and he's watching this dude get fucking annihilated and the guy like i mean the guy literally goes out at one point and then gets hit again and like wakes back up and just starts winging punches that aren't close nothing he's not defending himself just trying to survive yeah, and the ref just lets it go until the fucking bell rings and that dude just like zombie stumbles back to his fucking corner and like the the announcers are losing their fucking minds like i thought uh paul felder was gonna like jump over the fucking cage and like fight the ref <laughs> he's like what the fuck is he doing like you can hear like he was that close to like just screaming what the fuck he's like what the how's he you stop the fucking fight stop the fight like yeah and, and dc like daniel cormier he's like i don't i, I don't understand i don't understand what's happening like, yeah and uh, their brains were just breaking and then you can see uh mark goddard who's been like he's a ref in the uk and he's been doing oh jimmy for... neutron's dog god damn it sorry Goddard. Okay, I'm sorry. Keep going. He's been a ref for a really long time, and he's you know he's he's like highly respected, and he was like the head ref for the thing. That was for Luke, by the way. So there's always one one official that's in charge and like runs that side of things. You could see him outside the cage, pacing back and forth, losing his fucking mind. Like you literally see him like walking back, and I was like, during the fight, I was like, there's no way this dude's refing another fight tonight. Mark Goddard's gonna lose his fucking mind on this dude and like pull him, and then. As soon as the fight was over, like in the in the like before they even got to like the tail of the tape for the next fight, they're like, Mark Goddard has uh, informed us that that ref will not be refing any other fights tonight at all. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was wild to watch, just like a dude just, and and I mean, props to that dude because he came back out swinging in the next round, like he he actually clipped a guy and wobbled him. So you did, go ahead. I was gonna change topics. Keep talking about fighting, though. Oh, that dude! It's sports related. From from everyone's reaction, I it's just it it made me think that the dude is just a complete moron. But the way you phrased it at the beginning there makes me wish it was exactly like that. Like they actually pulled this man from some underground fights. Like he's he's just watched murderers kill murderers with their bare hands. Yeah, I and mean, like some like d deep fighting ring. He's just like what? Like why am I? Why am I? St he, his brains are still in his skull. Why would I stop this fight? Well, I mean, you can tell, like, he, <laughs> like he had that, he had that, like, vibe of, like, oh, well, I mean, he's still standing on his feet, so he's fine. Right. It's like right. he's been he, he's been con concussed for the past seven minutes. You've been letting him get punched in the head for seven minutes after you could tell he was seriously concussed. Like well, that's because his opponent's taking his time with him. Duh. Yeah. Like, he's like <laughs> he's just cat I've playing seen, with the mouse before he kills it. Right. Yeah, I've seen this <laughs> hundreds of times. Like. <laughs> it's like I don't I don't want to know what fight league that he normally refs for or whatever. I do. Rob. I do. Yeah. I want to know. Find me, find me that dark website, dude. <laughs> Bestscore.com. Yeah, you can find plenty of those fights. Those old Kimbo Slice backyard fighting fights. Yeah, yeah dude, he used to refo tournaments. I just said refo. He used to he used to referee fucking Kimbo Slice backyard fucking Florida tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> just
you ever see the one with uh, Kimbo and the fucking the police officer? I'm sure you've both yeah. seen it in the parking garage where the the officer wins, but. I don't know that I would call it a win. His eyeball is bulging out of his fucking crushed orbital socket by the end of it. His head, uh, his head is so swollen it looks like the level of blackness that Kimbo that Kimbo Slice is. He's purple. He's yeah. completely fucking purple. Like it looks like he's in blackface from how much he's gotten fucking beat down. He's like, and the winner, I guess they're doing thirty second fucking counts and shit like that for the because they they've got like fucking gangster money on the line. There's fucking there's heroin money of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of heroin money on the line and shit like that. So yeah, naturally there's a thirty second count for these fucking fights against these goddamn animals, and that's the referee that they choose. Like that yeah. guy was where he was fucking. Yeah, now let's get him over to. Uh, Abu Dhabi and fucking have him do some shit over here. Uh, I was gonna ask you, Lloyd, how did you feel about uh, the Bengals loss? I I think that it's it completely in line with everything that the Bengals have been doing recently this season. Like normally a Bengals loss is like so like egregious at this point in the season as far as what I've seen where it's just like fucking oh yeah the Bengals lost by 17 points or whatever the fuck it is and it's like yeah of course they did fucking cocksuckers I'm still watching the next game with my Bengals face tattoo but fucking <laughs> good goddamn pieces of shit Marvin Lewis all the things that I've heard over the years and whatnot but they lost by three fucking points which is a field goal right yeah. so like and I, I I didn't get to see it. I always I I've been wanting to watch the season, and I just keep forgetting on Sundays to do it because I'm doing shit with my kids and stuff. And uh, I think Sunday was Halloween, so it wasn't like yes. yeah, I was I wasn't like I'm gonna watch football instead of fucking be there for my kids. Fucking my son's first, he gets to go trick or treating experience because cute little drac. For, yeah, yeah, it was great. I'll talk about that later, but uh. I want to keep watching it, but I end up looking up the scores because I've been, ever since I watched that one game over here at your house, I've been fucking genuinely excited about football again. And I've been excited when the Bengals lose that they haven't been losing by some preposterous margins. Like, people aren't even covering their spread bets based on fucking how good the Bengals are doing, even in their losses, which, I mean, sucks that they lost. But how do you feel about it? It's, I don't, I'm talking out of my ass with just uh, shit that I don't really know that much about. But, like, it, it seems like that even in their losses, they're doing pretty good. What's your take on it? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a game that definitely should have won and just... They didn't play up to the level that they did. They get fucked by a call because that's what I kept reading. Well, yeah, but they, I mean that game should have been put away well before then. Like, <clears throat> you know, they were up plenty, and then just it just it was one of those ones where I think coming off beating the Ravens and like the media being like, "Oh shit, these are real deal." They were their first seed in the AFC. Like, I think coming off of that, like kind of that big head, you know, going against a team that's only won one game so far this year. Yeah. Well, they're number. Aren't they number one in the AFC right they now? They were, yeah. AFC. Uh, what are we? North. Yeah. Past tense. Well, yeah. were, but I mean, they're not far. What are they two now? Like, it's not. It's not like they're far off from one loss. But yeah, no, no. It's, but I'm proud of my fucking city. Whenever my city's crushing it, like I don't want to be a fair weather fan. But like, it's, it goes back into the fucking like Cincinnati comedy or music. Whenever people are doing cool shit here, I'm just stoked about it. I'm just like, this will bring more people into our city. This will make people pay attention to our city more. So I'm getting stoked about the Bengals again. I'm like, I don't want to watch a bunch of fucking loser losers suck dick the whole fucking time. Like, if we release podcasts every week, and maybe we do, and maybe that's why we don't get a bunch of listeners. I don't think we do. But if we did, where they just all sucked ass all the time, constantly. I wouldn't expect people to be like, well, they're from our city, and that's our boys, so we're going to... No, I'd expect all of our friends that are within the scene to be like, well, they fell off. No, we're not going to do your shitballs podcast. You don't put any effort. So why the fuck do people do that with sports? I don't understand it. Like, if a podcast starts sucking, people don't support it. If a movie <coughs> fucking series sucks, they don't, they don't be like, well, Halloween 27 was great. And shit like that. No. No. Let a nude guy direct it. That's why. That's what happened time and time again with movies, with fucking any other entertainment shit, with sports. Everybody acts like, it. no, that's my fucking, that's my team. I'll fucking ride or die for these millionaires that don't know my name or live in this city for most of the year outside of the times that they're sleeping in Airbnbs and hotels when they're fucking playing the games and not fucking their girlfriends out in Florida and <laughs> in fucking uh, London. Like, what? Why are you so ride or die for this entertainment thing? Like, I don't get that. Is that just part of how that entertainment thing works? Is you just have, like, a team and you go with I, that team? Yeah, I get it. I mean, I get it. I understand tribalism, but it's also, like, how silly tribalism is. I can't help but to point it Dude, out. That's just, like, do you, just to even think about getting into sports to me just sounds so exhausting. You're so into sports. What do you mean? You love sports. You just don't love that sport. 
You love you go out of your way to go and hang out with Lloyd every Saturday, not just to hang out with a I friend. I mean, team sports. You could give a fuck about that. You'd rather be taking acid and fucking sucking yes. a zombie's dick in Resident Evil Four, but like that. Yes, you're out here every week and you love it. You love that sport. To remember, like you how many people it. are on the team? <laughs> like thirty something. <laughs> 53. 53? Awesome. That's so many names to remember. You don't have to do that. Like, you could just be, like, the most fair weather of fair weather fans. Uh, not even fans, just people that watch it and know uh, almost nothing about it and still enjoy it. I watched it with, like, almost... I'm asking... I'm like a fucking chick at a football I, game. But I, the I whole would, time I was at Lloyd's house, what's the, what's the guy in the black dude? I have the, <laughs> and when I say stuff, you can tell Lloyd's looking at me like the way that I look at my daughter when she asks me why the sky's blue. And I'm like, do I tell her the, the real reason why or do I... A pat her on the head, be like, "That's cute." Did you want to know? Here's that's exactly simple- why. That's what exactly why I feel like even being a fair weather friend is just like, it's it's just a bold faced lie. I'm not lying though. I did enjoy it, and I for what I do know about it. If you're smart enough to watch where the ball's I going mean, like, I and know the color you're rooting for, I can't you'll talk figure ab- it out. I can't talk about it with nobody unless the game is on. Like, I know people who are into sports like, did you watch the game? Did you watch Matthews? Ran fucking 53 yards. Fucking, fucking, four lateral with the play with the someone block. I'm like, I don't know any of these words you're saying, dude. Speaking French I don't know right what now. the fuck you're talking about, man. Right, unless it. it's on and in front of my screen and I watch the play happen right now. I don't know what well, happened. That's how you figure out those things. But yeah. see, that's effort, dude. It's I really am- not. You just, you just <laughs> sit back and enjoy it, and you'll pick up the rest. It's it's kind of like... If yeah, I didn't not- enjoy it, I wouldn't fucking try at all to ask questions, but I only ask questions because I'm like, I'm loving this, but I just want to yeah. know more now. But, right. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. I mean, it's no different than like watching fight every once in a while. You're like, oh, why is that? Yeah. You know, like uh, when I was trying to explain uh, when... Uh, Dan Hooker's Rooker, arm was behind Hooker, it, yeah. and I'm like, hey, if, as long as he can keep from rolling onto that hip, and then as soon as he starts to roll over, I'm like, fight's over. Yeah. And then, you know, 10 seconds later it was, but it was same, I mean, the same difference. I'm, I'm just explaining a thing that... He almost guarded that. Also, yeah. dog, he had his back on the floor. Dog, if sports ball is not your thing, I get it, because it's not really my thing. But uh, it's it was fun. It was so much fun when the team that I wanted to like for so long was crushing it, and it brought me back to the last time that I liked them when they were playing good, which was fucking high school. It was literally nine years ago. It's the last time that I was like, they're crushing it! I have a team that I can root for. I want to root for the Bengals. My mom, Dolphins fan her whole life. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, why? She's like, Dan Marino. And I was like, well, whatever. But she was a Dan Marino fan, so she's Dolphins die hard all the time, constantly. And that was her fucking team. And, like, I would... I didn't know if that my my stepdad and her had money on the game. I assumed they did, but my mom would be downstairs screaming. You would hear it. It'd be, it'd be oh, fucking I know it. either Sunday or what's the other day? Monday night or fucking Thursday, right? Those right. are the three times. Any of those nights that there would be football on, I'd be upstairs and there's a vent that goes straight from upstairs to downstairs where they're watching it in the entertainment center and you would just hear, you motherfucker! Like just yep. at the top, every single football oh, night. Know, and that wasn't my stepdad. That was You'd hear my stepdad grumble mumbling and he's got a way louder voice than my mom. Outside of her being high pitched and cutting through, but she's fucking just going after it. She loves it. She's fucking Dude, super my, into it. My like, grandma will, is like seventy, uh, seven thousand years old. Has like an ounce of blood in her body that her heart is somehow like keeping, or like coursed through her veins to keep her alive for God knows how many more days or hours. Just being and recirculated every, by insurers. And, and the and, moment she she fucking sees Notre Dame gets a touchdown, she, like her body regenerates and she de ages <laughs> like twenty years and she screams and claps like. She She's, you know, 5,200 years old again. Yeah, I I see why. Have you tried to watch a game? Yeah. Well, recently. Recently. No. With the Bengals, though? No. Dude, give it a shot. I, can, I don't think I've sat free, down though, and tried watching a game in over a decade. If Lloyd's doing sports ball night where he's just sitting here quietly, come over here and fucking watch sports ball with sports Lloyd. Sports ball night. I, I think you'll enjoy it. I, I genuinely think you'll have a fun time watching it. Like, I... And if you don't, call me an asshole. I don't want to get you into something. <laughs> but I'm like, I didn't want to like it until I, like, I couldn't fake my reactions over <clears> here. Like, I. No, you, he genuinely uh, was getting excited. And I was, I, it kind of kind of surprised me. Like, he went from, oh, okay, I guess we're watching football to, like, all of a sudden, you know, I think we were watching a fucking Cleveland Browns game. Like, and. We are watching the Bengals. Was it Bengals versus Browns? No. No? No, we were for sure watching the Bengals. Okay, well. 
Maybe I've... It was the one where they had to pull it out of their ass right in the fourth quarter. Like they were, uh, like it seemed like they were about to get fucked all the way up until the very end of the game, and then they uh, finally pulled it out with uh, in the fourth. I, I don't know. I don't remember all the details of it. I just remember loving it the entire. Yeah, but he was like, he was time. actually genuinely like, getting excited. Like he was making more noise than I was. Like I'm just sitting there watching. Like, huh? he's like, oh shit. Yeah, because it was so close. The tension was real. When they're playing real good shit, like it's boring to watch a boring game. I don't give a fuck about a boring game. But they've been fucking playing their god. They're like, we're getting the Super Bowl <laughs> ring this year, bitch. That's what it felt like. It was like, and that's what I. Whenever I look their scores up, I'm like, you're playing like you mean it. Are you and I was have like, this I'll watch that during baseball season. I could have that enthusiasm during fights if I showed up during fights. I just haven't. Wa- I won't watch it on my own. Like, I used to. I used to, and then it became so hard to look it up for free. And UFC stopped putting out as many got, free fights and that weren't four Saturdays, years old. Right? Yeah, and it's a pain in the nuts. And I'm like, I could use one of my days in the bank, but I'm like, I'm going to use it to sit with my friends and watch fucking fights. <laughs> nope, because there might be an event that I want to go to that is better than that. And sorry, guys. Plus, you wouldn't even, my energy wouldn't be that much applauded at the fucking, be screaming over we, you guys. You would talking. have to pick your card. I'm an annoying sports fan. Like, I know I am. I'm a fucking... <laughs> we, would, we would make sure it was a card worth worth sitting you down for. Yeah, I would... Well, no, I, I like fighting way more than I like football because even the boring fights, quote-unquote boring, are so much more high stakes to me and so much more yeah. personal. Football is pretty high stakes. I mean, you're playing with your brain constantly, but you don't feel the entire like uh, 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 weight of the situation because you're almost watching it the way that you'd watch Madden, right? You're watching an entire team play. You can't focus unless there's like a, a cam that they put in, which occasionally, yeah, close-ups. And unless there's a cam that you can follow each individual player and slow motions of their heads <coughs> rattling and watching their eyes roll back and snot and blood and fucking spit flying out of their mouths and seeing the how the ferociousness of it, it's easy to get disconnected from how ferocious football is from that fucking area aerial fucking uh, uh, drone perspective. With fighting, it's super intimate. So even the most boring fights, I'm compelled immediately to watch people kick each other in the fucking face. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's just higher stakes. Super exhilarating. It's exhilarating. I'm sorry, I'm going so overboard with this. Keep talking about your fight cards, though. My bad. <sighs> oh, man, I have nothing to say after that rant. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Someone start a topic, because my brain just... Lloyd, flooded. I have a million, but I've been talking so nah, much. go ahead. You sure? Yeah. All right, so uh, we've talked about endlessly how uh, me and Lloyd specifically, and I'm sure you do it, but uh, how sometimes you'll just be locked into finding something on YouTube that, or Wikipedia or whatever it is, and you go down a rabbit hole about something that you know that you'll never actually invest any of your time in learning how to do, but you're going to learn how to do it on the internet. You're going to have a... C- Full comprehensive Harvard level fucking course of understanding of how to actually accomplish this goal if you were to ever do it, which you're never gonna do. <laughs> and you're gonna spend literally eight hours of your day, if not one day, several days a week, figuring out how to do this thing, how to master this hobby, and you're never gonna do it. And for me, I uh, found a channel on YouTube. I found two. One, three tips. R, or I'm sorry, S R E E tips. And it's a, a gold refining, gold and silver refining channel where this guy who's a chemist uh, shows you how he takes down jewelry. I thought that you would melt down jewelry and that's it. And then you turn it into a gold bar because I'm a fucking idiot. Nope, there's a whole chemical process because there's different levels of gold, which I was like, what does the carrots mean? And the carrots apparently mean how much gold is actually in a piece of gold. They add other metals to gold to make it structurally sound. That way that it doesn't break apart. Actual 24 karat gold is a lot softer than a lot of metals. It's going to break like lead would break. Yeah. So uh, you have to add other stuff to it. That's why you typically don't see 24 karat jewelry. And it's hard to make 24 karat gold. Why is it hard? Glad you asked, Luke and Lloyd. I'm going to tell you. It's because they have to melt down the jewelry. Then they have to encourt it. What's encourting, you ask? Encourting is when they have to either mix copper or silver. Uh, with the gold at a ratio of about 75% of the silver to the gold or copper to the gold in order to make a version of the gold that could be penetrated by nitric acid that has to be boiled for a, a multitude of hours in order to break that down. But the reason to use silver and not copper is because if you're also refining silver, you can uh, take the nitric acid solution that has dissolved silver in it and create an electrolyte that you then can grow silver crystal within. And this is what I've been doing for free 
with hours of my fucking free time at any given time for the last week and a half. Just nonstop. I fell asleep to one of the videos. You want a so warehouse boring. job where you can do all that? Because I know <laughs> some people. Dog, this is but. way more interesting. And he's breaking chemistry down. And this guy sucks at making like, videos. Like I, he, he films shit super shittily. He talks over it mid thing he never fast forwards all of his videos are an hour minimum he's like i'm gonna show you how to make a gold bar and he's gonna show you how to make a gold bar and it's gonna feel like it took a week and all the slow parts that he's fast forwarding through take fucking 15 minutes of no dialogue and he has no backup music and they get like a hundred thousand views and he's not even like he's not even trying to put background music he's just fucking you just sit there and watch a, a soundless video of a time lapse of a fucking nitric acid and then i was like well this is where the nitric acid is uh done dissolving all of that now he's poured all the nitric acid off i've got to a point where i understand it he's using distilled water to now clean it until it runs completely clear now that he's got it clear he's going to dissolve it in hydrochloric acid solution but when you dissolve it in a hydrochloric acid solution you're gonna have Certain Shut trace up! Metals. Exactly, but this is what I've been doing with my brain. So now this I is have only a... fun if it ends up with Cody making himself a grill, <laughs> or if he burns himself with nitric acid. <laughs> like fuck. Or Cody's just gonna show up to like a podcast missing like one nub of his finger. Like, like I, I was making a gold bar. Everything that I'm saying though is not me trying to be funny. Like uh, here's you my... heavily intrigued. It's me going off about video games. I and know how boring it is, yeah, but I dog, I just wanted to reiterate. How much of my life I've been I, wasting. Just dead ass, if you want a job where you can do that, I can probably make that It happen. won't be fascinating to me in the same way. It's got to really... Because <laughs> I didn't know all the details to it, but I, at, at the at Quality Gold, I worked there for like five years. Yeah, they do all that. I've held uh, $2.5 million worth of like gold bars in my mm -hmm. hands before. It's amazing how much gold is worth. Like the... I think a Troy ounce of gold is worth $58,000. A gram, it's $58. So a Troy ounce was 28 grams. So no, it's not that much. So 28 times 58. So whatever that is. I don't know the math off the top of my head, but it's a lot of goddamn money for a little tiny piece of nothing. It's like, well, this little thing that's smaller than your pinky is that's a, a $27,000 bar of gold. Like, huh? What yeah. are you fucking talking about? This so, shiny rock is worth a lot. Yeah, you see Fort Knox and the fucking solid gold fucking bars, and it's like one of those bars is worth like more money than you and all the people that you've ever known are ever gonna make ever for the entirety of their lives and probably their children's lives. Like that, it's 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 insane to me how much this shiny rock is worth. And I got all this from uh getting. By the way, your fault. You asked me. No, go ahead, Cody. You have a topic. I sure fucking do, Lloyd. This is a whole fucking the rest of the podcast. Topic. I'm not complaining. I'll shut up if you guys want me to, but I have. Oh, are so you about much to on go this. on and on about gold and silver? No, I, please. No, Next. I was going into coin collecting after this because it, <laughs> it. No, I used to be a coin collector. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, me and my dad used to do it. So like, I got re intrigued because my grandpa had been holding on to it because he assumes that I'm an alcoholic, drug addict, which he's right. But he's wrong about me wanting to sell it. I was like, I don't want to sell it. I like this shit. If silver ever goes up to $100 an ounce, I'm selling my silver coins, which I have a couple of that'll make me a couple thousand dollars. Outside of that, I'm keeping the rest of it. My silver collection isn't much, and I have no gold. But I just, I love coins, and I've always loved coins. But finding my old fucking, I have a giant, uh, one of those totes, you know, the package packing totes that you would get that are made of plastic with two fold over things filled to the brim with everything i mean i've got fucking every the mercury dimes and fucking uh, uh the 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 entire statehood quarters collection and fucking like not the entirety of it i have the other ones that haven't been booked up but all the way up until 2007 and uh i've got the standing liberties and i've got the fucking like a bunch of other boring shit nobody's gonna care up, neither of us yeah yeah, whatever, pennies and fucking nickels and dimes and fucking you know, lions change. and tigers, oh my. Yeah, and I've got it all b boxed up and labeled and dated, and it was like, it made me so intrigued. I started looking up coin shit, which I, f I eventually got to this fucking, uh, this uh, gold refining. But before I got to the gold refining, I found a channel called the Hoover Boys. These are some dudes from fucking, like, middle of nowhere Pennsylvania. They've all got Shane Gillis accents, and they're just fat fucking, like, middle-aged dudes, all except for one that works out for I don't know what reason. They just go out metal detecting up in the fucking, like, they just ask, like, random rich people that, like, their houses used to be, like, colonial and shit, and they just get stoked about finding just garbage in the yard. Like, they dig this shit up, and they're like, we found fucking belt buckles, fucking cool shit. I'm not doing a good, uh, I did a Bam Margera. <laughs> because that's the best Pennsylvania that I've got. 
But uh, yeah. <laughs> And they find coins, which is what got me back. I was like, oh, they're finding coins. They're finding, oh, that's a flowing hair liberty, which is like the very first coins that we ever made. Uh, 1795 going on. Yeah. And uh, no, 1792 going forward. If you find one of these Dismies, the, not dimes, but Dismies, D I S M E, uh, one of them just sold at auction for uh, $1.5 million. And this fucker found it in the ground. Like, And he was like, never selling this. And I was like, you're retarded! Sell it! For sure sell it! But it was like, this is fascinating to me that you just find shit in the ground and if it's made out of silver, it's like, it's a little like darkened, a little patinaed, but it's fucking, it still looks like it was just it was just hammered out the other day and i was like this has been in the ground for a couple hundred years this is fascinating and you see them finding gold in a river they take these little fucking metal detectors and they they go through the river and they find like gold watches and gold coins and fucking all this shit and i was just like man i started looking up metal detector prices and started budgeting it (laughs) (laughs) i was literally i was gonna make metal a guy that hates going outside i was like this is a reason to go outside i would love to do this and then I started looking up, I swear to God, I started looking up places in this area that had like, uh, I was like, I know Ohio isn't that old, but it's, it's probably close to old enough to where I can find some old shit. I was like, my grandpa's got a property, I'm going to ask him about it. And I was like, what am I doing? I don't have thousands of dollars for this crazy hobby. I can barely make it to a local comedy show. I'm over here pricing out metal detectors, dog. Like the little, uh, you can, uh, after you metal detect your shit and dig it up, there's a little, uh an attachment where you can uh it's like a wand you could stick in the ground and like find exactly where the coins at and i was like ah oh, that would be an extra two hundred dollars i think i could swing that if i just uh sell my kids at black market auction for what am i doing why am i i was getting stoked about this hobby and then and then i was like all right i'm silly and then i was like what gold refining what's that youtube fucking 28 hours later i can tell you everything about how you can fucking refine gold in the pure 24 karat gold or Five nine silver, which means it is ninety nine point nine 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 percent silver. The only reason it can't be a hundred percent is because it breaks the second rule of thermodynamics. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking shoot you in the face <laughs> if you fucking say <laughs> anything about the rule of thermodynamics <laughs> during this fucking podcast again, you son of a bitch. Dog, this I motherfucker wanna... failed high Shut school science. Fuck he's, up, he's over dude. Here. Why can't it be a hundred percent? You ask. Because it would break the rule of third. Fuck yourself. The second dude. rule. The second Fuck rule. Fuck yourself, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's been shit, more fun dude. watching Luke's face than like even throwing in comments. So if I'm more quiet, it's I'm I'm literally watching like Luke. It looks like, like I don't know the reverse of a panic attack. <laughs> It's like he's losing interest as like you know how like when someone's you see someone like starting to like panic or whatever, like and they're getting worked up and they're getting like more and more tense. like yours is just going the other way. He's losing interest at a devastating rate. You're like you're like ice cream in the sun, just like <laughs> everything like your posture and your face is just like slowly melting away the as you well, there was a, it was a roller coaster listening to it. at first it started with like it started with, is this what people hear when I talk about, like, model robots yeah. and stuff like that? People hey, just, like, they're just, like, I'm happy you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, Just, yeah. like, don't really hear the deep. And then, like, and then I, I started thinking, man, I hope people don't give a fuck like this. Like, <laughs> then, I got so fascinated, I couldn't help myself. And then, and then. I was like, man, I'm really glad my YouTube feed is as lame as it is, dude. I got, like, the history on Starscream. Like, I got fucking <laughs> histories on, like, old cartoons and No, shit. I do like, that, too. <laughs> it's an unfortunate life that I'm living. I'm just collecting information that I'll never be able to utilize. Uh, That's do you good have, for you. Do you have anything on this? Like, I, I feel like this is something that you may have done with maybe a different topic. Or any of this, does any of this shit fascinate you no, that like, I've been uh, talking about? Lily got into like uh, gems and minerals and shit like that when she was young. So we've got boxes and boxes of all kinds of different. That yeah. shit. Like we go down to the gem and mineral show every year with my friend Tony and his daughter. And Don't be excited about his shit. Be mad at him too. Hold on. Hold, wait, hold on, hey, man. I have to uh, give, give it me, a chance give me to another find 30... out if it's fucking lame or not. Yeah, give dude. me another 34 minutes of going on about <laughs> it before... <laughs> Before you see how he is. <laughs> Let's fucking talk. We gotta find out how she fucking breaks the, the got, third rule of thermodynamics. I got three sentences in. He's like, God, you're gonna listen to this lame shit? <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't hear anything about nitric acid in the start of this fucking story. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh... Don't even get me started on sulfuric acid. All right, oh, keep fuck. going. <sighs> God damn you, Cody. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I don't even the know. The Gem and Mineral Show. Yeah, you guys yeah. go down there every year because Lily got uh, fascinated with it. Yeah, so I mean, like, I, I get the, the finding, like, a weird hobby like that and getting yeah. into it because, like, Lily would look up different stuff, like, oh, I want one of these, and then we'd go find one at the next place. You know, it wouldn't be some crazy expensive thing, but it was one she just, for whatever reason, liked, and she it would, like, cool. yeah, she would just, like, research shit before we went, and, like, so, like, I... I I got, you know, kind of into that uh, more for her sake than anything else. But, yeah, it was one of those ones where you're like, oh, she wanted this. And, you know, you rattle off the name or something. And it, you can just see it in everybody's eyes. They're like, I don't care. And I'm like, yeah, yeah that's fair. That's fair. I, I get it. I also get why you guys hate this. But, like, it's... I don't hate it. It's it, This has been fun to watch. <laughs> I hate hearing you say thermodynamics. <laughs> Knowing how stupid I am. Yeah. Knowing just how fucking dumb I am. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> I shouldn't be allowed to say that word. You, you know be, that I've regurgitated need, something else that somebody else is smarter than me. You should fucking like have some sort of like level. Like you need to have some sort of pass that allows you to say it. Like, otherwise, you, you should have just get out of here with your GED, it. you fat-headed fuck. <laughs> you should have just stopped and like, good. What, what is the second law? <laughs> like, yeah, what's the first? It? I don't fucking know. I just listen to smart <laughs> guy on YouTube tell me that. <laughs> You're right. I have no business saying these words. I'm oh. trusting one guy on YouTube, but he seemed like he knew what he was doing. All right, my that. problem is when I get into something like that, I, I will need, I won't say something like that without knowing what it is. So one leads to the next, leads to the next, leads to the next, and all of a sudden I'm like, am I about to start reading on string theory at fucking two a.m. <laughs> when I have to work in four hours? I started getting there. Is right. my problem. Like <clears throat> I don't know the second law of thermodynamics, but I'm one more video of him talking about it about. All right, well, uh, Harvard does have free classes for the next three months that you can watch online. I guess I'm going to listen to an eight-hour fucking audio book while I'm blinking my eyes barely awake like this, like a fucking, like I'm doing Morse code in the middle of a fucking uh, Chinese prison and shit like that, trying to, like, uh, uh, j j yeah, trying to uh, help, please. Uh, my parents' address is, like, in with my eyes because I'm up for three days straight trying to pay attention to these fucking videos and I'm writing shit on my walls and chalk pen and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like fucking a, like grease, like a grease pen, like, yeah. like Goodwill hunting, like writing on a fucking mirror. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'm... every single thing you wrote down is completely wrong. <laughs> like if anyone else came in and looked at it, they're like, none of that, none of that, none of that makes any sense. Like that's that's not even a number. That's not. It's like it's like a uh, uh, in math. The, what is it? The Algernon story? Like they just gave this dude like a bunch of drugs. I'm smart as shit. Yeah. It's just or like that episode of fucking Always Sunny where they yes. convinced uh, Charlie that he's. Uh, a genius all of a sudden. He's got all the shit on the walls with the he lines. He can speak Mandarin, he just but he can't. speaking Mandarin to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, it's clearly nothing. He's yeah. just making noise. Yeah, dude. I I hope that I'm better than Charlie and Sonny, but I don't think I'm far off. But it was just so... You're almost as amusing, though, so that's... <laughs> oh, God, that hurts me a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it uh, right on the chin, but... There was just something I, I really missed out not getting a chemistry class in my senior year because I skipped out going to chemistry. They put me in physics, which was supposed to be you could either pick physics or chemistry as your uh, – you could do some base level if chemistry you're smart. shit. Uh, yeah, they, they put me in physics in my 11th grade year, and it was supposed to be a senior class. There was only two other 11th graders in the class, and uh, they were talking about shit that I had to just catch up on, and I was like – Physics is cool, but chemistry is the one that I want. And they're like, well, you could do chemistry next year. And I went to options. So I missed out on chemistry, <coughs> and I've always been fascinated about it. And uh, just watching this man, like, take, like, different acidic solutions and turn it, turn gold, like an actual metal, into a salt and dissolve it. And then look at a solution that looks like Gatorade that's clear but yellow and know that there's fucking $17,000 worth of gold in there that now can have a, a, a I forget something bicarbonate I have to watch more videos but he adds a, a powder to it and it precipitates the gold so as he adds this fucking what looks like Kool-Aid powder to it it's the solution turns <laughs> black and all the gold starts turn like from a clear solution gold starts forming like magic, like alchemy, starts like coming to the bottom and forming in the bottom. And then how he gets that into a fucking shiny gold, pure gold fucking thing is like, it's it's like magic. It's everything that fascinates me about like dumb nerd shit. Is, but it's real life. This isn't magic. This is chemistry. This is science. This is like shit. This is magic that you can do in real life that isn't even fucking magic. But it looks like it. It's crazy. There's weird fucking fumes coming off of it. There's reaction shits changing colors. Like it appeals to all the dumb nerd shit in my brain. Like, uh, not just the science of it. Fast it's not... forward three months and Cody's just, like, pouring Goldschlager <laughs> through, like, a, a toilet paper tube What's... with a fucking... 
<laughs> with a dryer sheet. Gold slugger. <laughs> with a dryer sheet, like rubber band around it. Like, now if only I can find some carbon mononic acid to do. <laughs> now I'm it. applying the lemon juice so it melts off the uh, the gay, uh, whatever the gay cinnamon <laughs> liquor is. He's like, I think, I think Drano would do it, man. I'm pretty sure it's the same shit, right? I no, think, I'm... I think the more appropriate one is fast forward three months and Cody's making meth in his backyard. <laughs> Just shaking up. Where's my bottles. sodium bicarbonate? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was fun to go down that route hole. All right, we're getting, we're at an hour. I hope people I'm like. Gl- I'm glad you like rant. looped it back around there to like. <laughs> it's like magic because like I, you were just going back into it again. I was like, how did this happen? Like, yeah. how do we get back into the circle of hell? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried to make it appealing to your nerd brain, so maybe you could fall down this rabbit hole on acid. D- one dude, day. I did. I did with Full Metal Alchemist <laughs> ages ago. Dog, I mean the same things that apply there. Why are we apply here? Yeah, because uh, al- <laughs> yeah, science was considered magic. It was alchemy centuries ago. Yeah, uh, so they were too stupid. Cody's like, I'm gonna figure out how to turn lead into gold, man. I got it. I, fu- I figured it out. Well, I watched dude, enough YouTube you videos. Can't, that's one of the laws of alchemy, dude. You can't be doing that. <laughs> Read the message that I just got. Not out loud. Just read it to yourself. Uh, we're at the end. Of, we're at the end of our episode. Read the last message that I just got. Uh, not out loud. Uh, we're at the end of our episode. I uh, I have a read that's going to be a little different than our uh, than our last reads for our uh, for our buddy uh, Luke. Would you mind doing your read first while I pull up the new read for our friend? Uh, yeah, absolutely. 100%. Thank you, sir. So uh, we we are sponsored by Scarlet Vape and Smoke Shop. Uh, Scarlet- oh, I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm so sorry. We, we're going to go back to it. If you guys want to hear the rest of this conversation, go to patreon.com. So everybody shuts it off when they hear the reads. Uh, there's more podcasts coming. If you're a new listener, uh, we're going to keep talking bullshit. Maybe not the chemistry stuff that made you guys all fucking fall asleep in your cars and crash into fucking uh, kids in a crosswalk. But we, we've got more interesting shit coming. I've got all kinds of uh, topics that, uh, you know, won't be this boring uh, on the Patreon. Go and check that out. And our entire archive of content 50 plus hours and growing there's huckers fuckers my side podcast there's the bastard llc which we need to do luke's episode of that's our movie companion podcast and there's the bonus episodes that come out every week as well as an uh, early access to the free show so the show that you're listening to now of course comes out for free every sunday but you can get it on saturday uh if patreon doesn't fuck us we'll get into that uh later but uh if you want to check that out www patreon.com slash the bastard sermon five dollars unlocks everything there's no other tiers if you want to donate more we appreciate it but five dollars gives you fucking everything i think i think it's very worth it uh i'm sorry to interrupt your read luke go ahead no you're fine uh scarlet vape and smoke shop uh they've got the best shit when it comes to smoking culture i'm not i'm not kidding they've got quality glassware they've got uh the papers you need of any brand blazy susan's Tops, jobs, they've got them all, you know what I'm saying? They've got these excellent grab, grab lip labs, frit spoons. There's some pretty nice bowls. I like the uh, depth and size of them. You can pack them heavy. They've got uh, an awesome AFM straight tube, 9mm, 18-inch piece there. It's pretty awesome. I don't like science and nerd shit. Oh, centimeters is, is too hard for you to understand? Okay. But anyways, yeah, we're... Scr- <laughs> <laughs> I'll get there. So we're sponsored by Scarlet Vape and Smoke Shop. So go check them out. Get those pieces. Get Kratom. Get your Delta 8. Get your Delta 10. They have it all. And you can get 15% off your order if you let them know you're a bastard. And you can find them at one of two locations. They've got one at 11424 Montgomery Road, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45249. And the other is at 937 Monmouth Street, Newport, Kentucky, 41071. Go ahead and give them your money. Thank Check you. them out. We love those guys. Uh, Anthony Tank Mansfield has his first solo art show in three years. On Saturday, November 20th at Fretboard Brewing in Blue Ash, which is a suburb of Cincinnati. The show, entitled I'll Sleep When I'm Dead Number 3, consists of 100 hand-drawn pieces of art being shown as one gigantic piece. The show starts at 4 p.m., and you can buy the artwork starting at 5 p.m., uh, there's one for $25 or you could get two of them for $40. If you have any questions, DM him on Instagram at Neil to no one. 
go and check him out. He's great. And check out his podcast, What You Into. It's all about hobbies and collections. It's in my regular rotation. He just did two live shows and some other shit. There's plenty of content to listen to, 40-plus episodes, so 40-plus hours, all free. Go and check him out. He's fucking awesome. Uh, as always... Go and check out Fuck You, We Like the Bengals. That's Lloyd Johnson's podcast, host of the Bastard Sermon, as well as local comedian Alex Schubert's podcast. It's been inherited down the down the ages. There's been several different people that have done this podcast over the years, and it's been passed. The torch, the proverbial torch, has been passed on down to him, much like Lloyd Johnson's spot on this podcast from Patrick to him. Uh, this podcast is now in their lap, and I think they're doing a phenomenal job. They were even they're nice when I interrupted them when I needed an SD card. So uh, shout out to them for not just crushing my skull like Lloyd's capable of doing, like the mountain in fucking Game of Thrones and just popping my eyeballs out of my head. They do not just straight-up sports talk that might just be boring for even sports fans to listen to. They insert comedy. There's roast <laughs> jokes throughout the entire thing. It's a fun listen. I've been there for the recording of a portion of one of it, and I've listened to a few few of them and they're all entertaining and I'm not a huge sports fan as much as I'm kind of kind of dabbling with the idea of fucking with football again if you're not into football it's still a quality podcast to listen to and I want you to check it out congratulations to our former host and our friend Patrick Seda on his marriage to Rachel very happy for both of you guys congratulations on fucking tying the knot and getting married and uh, doing it in your little private uh, way in the mountains of fucking who knows where Kilimanjaro or wherever the fuck you were at yeah, uh, they 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 seem like through their pictures on Facebook that they had a good time. Uh, very happy for them. If you want to go and support Patrick and uh, all the work that he's done promoting this show and getting this show together, go and check out Dark Mountain Colt on Instagram. He's got all kinds of art that's coming out on a weekly basis, sometimes multiple pieces in one week. And they're all for sale. You can commission them for pieces. He's got a fuckload of digital stuff. He'll make you prints. His shit goes on t-shirts. People get his stuff tattooed. It's quality. I love his art. Some of his shit that he's doing that's really good is the Pokemon series, the horror Pokemon. He's doing all kinds of gory, fun, pop culture, fucking weird shit. It's all stylized and a fun way to look at. It'd be a great wall hanger for your house. Go and check that out. Um... Go get a tattoo from Nick Glavin. Go get a fucking tattoo from Bobby Bronson. Go and fucking uh, support any of our friends that have been on the podcast. Uh, Lee Kimbrell hosts an open mic at uh, The Hub in OTR every single... Uh, is that Monday? Is that a Monday? Yeah, so on Mondays, go and look it up and check it out. Uh, there's uh, all kinds of other open mics going on throughout the city over at Chameleon. If John Holmes has some shit going on, check it out. If Cal Jensen's out there, check it out. Jeremy Johnson, again, go and fucking support... The show that we're going to be on, not for us, but for all the fucking cool comedians, and also for us, uh, on that fucking Thanksgiving weekend that we gave dates for earlier. We'll uh, tag everybody in posts and shit like that so you know where it's at. Go and check all that shit out. If I'm leaving anybody out here that's friends of us, uh, friends of ours, rather. Suck a uh, dick. Yeah, suck a dick and die. You're not a friend uh, anymore. I hate you. Fuck you. Kidding. Go and support everybody that we've ever eh, had on here. Or not. Or not. Except for the Nazi. Maybe not him. Yeah. All right. Patreon.com slash the bastard sermon. Five dollars, bitches. Goodbye. Bye.